let's go to Amy in Portland, Oregon. Hey, Amy, what's going on? Hi, thanks for taking my call. Of course, thank you for calling. The show would be really lame. It's a caller show. It would be really lame if people like you didn't call in. So what's up? How can we help? Well, I'm calling because um, I've been married for um, over 15 years to a really wonderful man. He's kind. He's supportive. He's <laughs> can, I stop? He's... can I just stop you? For yeah. some reason. It doesn't work the opposite. It doesn't. Uh, it doesn't work when husbands call about their wives. When a <laughs> wife calls about her husband and preps it with like ten different positive adjectives, I know something's coming. Yeah. So I've been married fifteen years. He's wonderful and great. And what? <laughs> and what? Just drop the other um, shoe. Yeah, he. I'm. En- I am enabling him to continue to work part time to be generally lazy, um, to not take care of me and his family, um, and to spend time on YouTube and listening to podcasts and and getting into so into politics and things that matter to him. But um, I just can't do that anymore. And I'm just wondering, how do we move forward? Because I'm ready to do big, drastic things that make him understand this isn't working anymore. Um, I don't... I don't feel like we have grounds for a divorce or anything like that, but I mean, sometimes I think like, do we separate our money now or do I move out so he can see that he is dependent on my money to keep doing these things and he needs to work. And so I'm just, I'm not really sure how to go forward with this. Whoa. There's so much here. Number one, you started the call with I'm enabling him. And so I want to, What's the right thing? I love that you are looking for the things that you can control. I don't know that you're enabling him because you're not his mom. And I know that over the last 15 years, he has been way more like a child to you than your partner and your lover and your um, best friend, right? You've been his mom for a while. Is that fair? Yeah. 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 So in that sense, I guess you've enabled him, but he's a grown man, right? And so you have, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, he's a grown man via age. So maybe instead of enabling him, you have duct taped and nailed and, and screwed this family together. You've held it down while you've got a, um, loser of a husband in the next room playing video games or like learning the nest conspiracy theory. (laughs) Right. I don't know if that's enabling as much as you filled in all the gaps because you're trying to keep your family together. Do you have little kids? We do. We have uh, two daughters, six and eight, who are even aware of this. I mean, they Jeez. ask me, like, how come, you know, how come we don't do this? How come? And I'm just like, because I'm the only one working full time. And, and they're like, what does that mean? And how come Exactly. They're getting an extraordinary and- picture of what a, uh, what a partner looks like in marriage, right? Yeah. What a great image for them to carry around when they start dating. Oh, this is mm. what, um, <laughs> geez, you're going to get me all, yeah, you're going to get me all fired up. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. So you've talked to him about this before. What's he say? Why won't he get a job? Why won't he work? Why won't he turn the stupid computer off? Um, he, he always says, I understand. I, I know that you're frustrated. And, um, he, he has, typically had one or two part-time jobs um, and sometimes they equal about, you know, a full-time amount of work, but just with COVID and other things like lack of ambition and initiative to keep his nonprofit going, um, it's kind of fizzled out. Oh God, what nonprofit is it? Is this um, some church related thing? Yeah, it's a Christian ministry and that's what's hard because it's not, no, listen, it's not. I'm so (laughs) sick of people using nonprofit Christian ministries to do nothing, to just sit there and be like, well, I'm just waiting for, it's, it's, it's an insult to, (laughs) it's an insult to Christian faith. It's an insult to people who are out working 14 hours a day to help feed their families and help feed their communities and their neighbors. It's an embarrassment. It's shameful. Okay. And, and, Yet, in theory, these things are great, right? In theory, they're going to help. But his is not helping anybody, is it? 
Not currently. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> it's not helping any. God, it pisses me off. Those things drive me crazy. No, I just want to. I just want to start. Go get a job. Go get a job and then take money and give it to homeless. Do that, right? Um, I just, God's called me to quit everything and just um, for my wife to work full time while I sit here and surf the internet. And oh my God, oh, it makes me rage out. Mm-hmm. So when you say you're about to do drastic things, what are you going to do? Well, um, about six months ago, I told him that I was going to leave if we didn't get a part-time job. Were you being serious um, or were you threatening? No, I was serious. I had told him, I had shown him the places I was looking into, moving into. Why haven't you Um, left yet? I had figured out a budget. I don't think you're Um, actually going to leave. I think you were threatening him. Like, well, you know that um, Tom at work thinks I'm pretty. What do you think? I I, I think that's what you were doing. Hmm. I feel like I was pretty ready to go, but I mean... But you're not going yeah. to. Yeah. Well, now I'm thinking um, about just taking my money that comes in from my job and just putting it into a different account. No, don't and do that. Listen, if you do that, number one, <laughs> you are modeling for your daughters what a strong, powerful woman looks like. And you would be choosing to disconnect your marriage even further under the same roof. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. do that, right? Don't, don't heal cancer by shooting yourself in the foot. Okay, I won't. Do Does that, that make sense? Yeah. So I've thought. I mean, I've had people from our church talk to him. Um, I don't. I don't know what to do at this point. Yes, you do. Oh, you think it's like when, it when you when you have sat down <laughs> with him? No, listen. When you've sat down with him. And said, I'm taking the internet out of this house. You have to get a job. What does he say? Oh, I know, baby. I know. I'm just, uh, I'm, I'm working. What does he say? He, he went out and got a part-time job. That's bull crap. Why won't he go get jobs? Oh, yeah. Um, cause yeah, the ministry or whatever. I mean, I'm at to the point where I said, I'm ready for this. It's not a ministry. Back. It's a waste of <laughs> freaking time. It's not, um, it's, <laughs> you cannot wrap up a bum with like a little Jesus ribbon on it. You can't do that. Yeah. Well, I'm really working. No, it's over. Close it. Tell him this, that he is choosing a part-time failure over you and your daughters. Yeah. Because that's what he's doing. Because okay. he's also, well, he's putting a picture not only of a lazy partner, but he's creating a, your daughters are growing up with a exhausted, resentful mom. Because they pick up on your eye rolls. They pick up on your, they pick up on your, um, just you're gritting your teeth. They're absorbing all of that. Yeah. And it's becoming the air they breathe. It's becoming normal. Yeah. And you, Amy, deserve more than that. Am I telling you to divorce your husband? No, but he's cheating on you with a failing nonprofit. He's cheating on you with the internet. And I'd be willing to, I don't have a great car. It's a piece of crap, to be honest with you. But I'd bet it um, that he's got some sort of other relationships on that computer, too. Whether it's pornography, whether it is his little political conspiracy theory buddies, right? Whatever it is. He's got an alt universe that he lives in. And my guess is he is probably depressed beyond all depressed. He is. And he is in a, he is sitting in ash and he doesn't know how to get up. And I can talk to him. Your friends can talk to him. People from church can talk to him. A counselor can talk to him. But until he decides, I want my life to be better for myself, for my wife, for my daughters. Until he can put the mouse down and quit clicking He's putting you in a position to have to choose the life of your daughters, to choose your life. Does that make sense? 
No, it makes perfect sense. So yeah, I am not I'm telling you to excited. leave your. I'm not telling you to leave your husband. Okay. I hate divorce. I'm high on marriage. I love it. But he's drowning your family. And I don't think, this is just me, I don't think you've been clear with him. I think you have tried your best to be a peacekeeper. Yeah. Is that fair? Maybe tell me if I'm yeah. wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. No, it, no, you're right. I, I mean, I'm always trying to help him find the next solution and, and give an idea of, you know, just a, a Band-Aid. I'm trying to always apply a new Band-Aid. That's right. So there's something else going on in his life that he's either hiding from you or he's drowning in. Uh-huh. And it's time for all of that to come into the light. And here's my guess, Amy, and you, <laughs> you tell me if I'm right. My guess is there's other people that you're going to with your challenges or your frustrations or you're, ha- you're on a fast track to finding another life too, if you haven't already. I mean, I just talked to a counselor. <laughs> I try to, you know, I try to do it right. Um, yes. Or I talk to women from my church. You know, I try to, I try to do it right. I mean. But it's hard. Yeah. And somebody. Yeah, I mean, I've, spoken, I've spoken openly with him whenever people are, men have given, paid attention to me. And I said, you need to know that this is how affairs get started. Because someone is dissatisfied in marriage, and then someone else starts giving them attention, and so you need to do a better job in this marriage. <laughs> and he's and he's been very receptive to that, and said, you know, I'm sorry, and things get better temporarily, and and so we're just always on this. It gets a little bit better, it goes back to normal. So you, y- y'all are at it, it. You're drowning. Okay, that's like you find a hole in your boat, and he puts a piece of duct tape over it, and you're drowning. Yeah. So all you got to rip the router out of your house. Uh-huh. I thought about that. <laughs> Disconnect the internet today. Disconnect it. And tell him, in my house, in our house, we're not going to have internet. We're going to have each other. And you can tell him, I made an appointment at such and such family therapist. You're coming. And if you choose not to come, you're sending a very clear signal that you think this marriage is over. Yeah. And there cannot be ambiguity. There cannot be any more peacekeeping. There cannot be any more protecting his feelings. Because you are drowning. Like when you're a lifeguard and somebody's drowning, they will, and they, are, they will hit you. They will grab you. They'll drown you too. They will tell you to elbow them or punch them to get them to stop so that you can get yeah. both of you to shore. Okay. I'm not telling you to elbow or punch your, you punch him. What I'm telling you is you're trying to stay wrapped up with somebody who's drowning you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. So all the lights come on tonight, all of them, or you let him know tomorrow I'm taking a half day of work. The kids are going to such and such, and we are having this conversation. And if you've got somebody that you trust a counselor, you can have this conversation in front of them. Great. It may be good for you to go to your counselor and say, I'm at my or what moment. Because I will not let my daughters grow up in this. I will not be held hostage by a waste of time failing nonprofit that prohibits my husband from getting a job or from being a present father or for putting down stupid political crap and being present in our family. I will not be second rate to a YouTube channel and a whatever, whatever, whatever. And by the way, nonprofits are awesome. Nonprofit ministries are awesome. But they don't take precedence over your family. They don't take precedence over eating. And they don't take precedence over um, math. They have to work. People have to want to be a part of these things. That's what, that's a whole other thing. (sighs) Amy, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But the dancing and the peacemaking is over. Now we're in it. Now you're in it. Lights are on. You're going to get somebody to sit with you. You're going to walk through. Here's the things that are going to be different in my home. You're going to ask your husband to be a part of it. And you're going to let him know clearly and unequivocally, not with threats, not with, well, you know, Bill thinks I'm pretty. None of that crap. None of that. Well, I've got another apartment. If you don't, none of that. Those games are over. You got two little girls watching this whole thing play out, absorbing every second of it. 
They deserve better than this. You deserve better than this. He deserves better than this. He's got to get help for his whatever addictions he's got, which he does. He's got to get out of these other communities, which he is. And he's got to get help for his depression. And somebody who loves him has got to flip all the lights on and say, done. Somebody says, done. So I want you to let me know how that goes. Let me know how it goes. Okay. And it's going to be hard and it may not go great. All right. Or this may be finally, finally. Thank you so much for that call, Amy.